Hello again guys, it's been a while. Apologies for that in terms of first rides. So we're back at QBS Power Sports in Malden. And today we are going to be riding. Dum dum dum. Make our way inside here. I wonder which one it is. This one! <laughs> the one that's patiently waiting for me to take out right at the front door. Um, super excited about riding the Tenere. This is the World Raid, uh, which is the third spec um, in terms of the Tenere. Uh, although I would say Tenere. Um, but let me get the bike out um, and then we'll jump on and let you guys know what, what it's like. Okay guys, we are off. We are on the Yamaha Tenere 700 World Raid version. Um, so it's a good place to start really. Um, so here, very busy today, so I have to be very careful. Um, so the Yamaha Tenere 700 comes in essentially four specs. You've got the standard version, which comes in at uh, 10,000 pounds, I think, or just, just over. Um, you've got the rally version, which comes with slight upgrades in, in specs. You've got the World Raid, which is the, the one I'm on currently. Um, it looks a bit meaner, a bit more Mad, bad, um, no, mad uh, Max vibes. And then you've got the World Rally, which is the sort of top of the spec, which comes in, I think, about £4,000. So there's a £4,000 gap between the, the four different uh, versions. Obviously, you can add all sorts of, you know, specs, etc. onto it. Um, I have to be extremely honest. This is, an ex this is a very tall bike. So I am six foot and I am on my tippy toes. Um, so for those shorter than me, if you are going to try this one, Please ch up ch try and change the um, suspension or the settings or something because I am on my tippy toes um, and I've got and it's going to be some scary times here if we're sort of standing still and um, trying to pull off. So what's this bike all about now that we are out of that horrible road? So the Tenere 700 is a 689 cc um, liquid cooled parallel twin uh, four stroke engine it is gonna set you back as i mentioned around ten thousand pounds for the basic version produces 72 brake horsepower which in reference and i'm going to be very careful today to not try and compare and contrast this bike against a sports bike because that's not what this bike is it's an adventure bike so i'm going to be very careful not to only focus on power and acceleration which is usually what most of the times my videos revolve around um, so this is a bit of a new segment for me so please bear with me as i get used to it um, main competitors against this bike are the ktm 890 adventure which i think is super popular this is super popular as well and if you look at um, reviews and kind of magazines etc it comes in um, rated usually in the top three when there's when they're kind of comparing these bikes so 890 adventure main competitor you've got the honda xcel 750 and the ducati desert um, Right, about time we get on to uh, second gear here. <laughs> um, the, I think, uh, in terms of aesthetics, I wasn't a huge fan of them, but I've actually come to appreciate them. And I think as you mature in age, be like a fine wine, you sort of tend to appreciate different looks rather than just sports bikes. Um, so I, I do like the look of it. I think it looks mean, it looks aggressive. And when we do the show around, I'll show you as well. Um, but I just think it's got some nice sort of classic lines to those enduro cross bikes that, you know, we were all so in awe of when we were youngsters. At least I was. I used to live right next to a motocross track. And um, I didn't grow up. On, on cross bikes, you know, motocross bikes, but I always used to watch them and see them jump, you know, 10 feet in the air. 
So this is this is kind of gives me that that vibe. One of the main differences between this and the standard version, if I look down, is this big double-sided fuel tank, which is 23 litres in comparison to 16 litres. We've got the usual Yamaha controls here. This bike has three modes. It has ABS on and off. It has ABS just in the front and then ABS off. And I'm pretty sure right now I should have ABS on, I hope. Otherwise, we'll find out soon enough once it starts raining. Um, the TFT dash, I think it's fairly simple. You know, it's not, it doesn't compare and contrast against some of the newer bikes, you know, like the um, Super Duke, for example, or the new BMW. BMW. Uh, they're just, you know, more colors, more going on, but it tells you what you need. And I'm not yet sure if you can connect your phone to this. I've yet to sort of find out. Um, so stick with me and I'll put in the description if you can. Loads of bikers out today. It's going to be a good day. I have to make sure I don't get lost here because I don't really know where I'm going and my riding partner is effed off in the front. So we'll take it easy here and um, hopefully he waits for me. So that's the that's sort of the the bike basics out of the way um as i as i mentioned it, it's a very tall bike so please be careful when you jump on it um just bear that in mind i feel pretty badass on this though i'm not gonna lie um i feel like i'm about to go and conquer the dakar race uh, which for those of you that don't know it's a super world famous desert race which I think this bike or the sort of what this bike was bred and shaped on um, was very much a popular winner uh, many many times if you actually look on the Yamaha website it, the description of this bike is rally bred ad, uh, long distance adventure bike so I think hopefully you know we'll, we'll find out if that's true or not now a bit a big disclaimer here guys honestly um i'm not going to be able to take it off-road uh because a i'm not comfortable riding off-road now i've not really ever done it before so it'd be a very bad idea um and two i don't know if uh because of my lack of skill i don't want to damage the bike or you know yamaha QBS and kindly let me borrow it for the afternoon so I don't want to return it to them in 10 pieces um, so we're going to stick to the road so it is a bit of a disclaimer because obviously this bike is meant to do not just road it's meant to go off-road and that's sort of I assume where most of its capabilities kind of kick in um, so bear with me there you're only going to get one-sided review but hopefully you want to enjoy this one-sided review Traffic's cleared up a little bit, and I've caught up to the riding buddy. Which is always nice, no one wants to be left behind. It's so busy today, um, so I'm in the Essex kind of molding area, and it's just chockers everywhere, which we don't like. We like big open roads so we can let these bikes go. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention is that it does not have um quick shifter or dam blipper although i think you can add those as optionals you get used to the quick shifter a lot when you're on new bikes um which becomes so lazy So I'm not getting any wind pretty much it's it's very limited obviously you know when I opened up there still not going too fast or sort of motorway speeds but um, this screen I think is doing a very good job of 
blocking the wind from even hitting my helmet. I can feel a little bit on my chest, um, but that's about it really. We'll find out in a second once we... Uh, The suspension are KYB and Saks rear monoshock suspension. Their engine is powered by the extremely fun, attractive, popular MT-10 engine. It's obviously been tweaked accordingly. Um, I like it. It feels very Yamaha, um, if that if that is a if a word to describe it. Um, I was trying to find where the revs are as well, and I've, it took me a little while to kind of spot them on this on this screen. But they're right next to the miles per hour, which I guess is where they should be. So, what do adventure riders look for in a bike? That's the key bit here, I think, um, because, like I said, I must and I must and compare what I typically look for in a bike. Um, I think the number one thing is comfort, which I don't think anyone can deny, right? An adventure bike, you're supposed to be able to take it for long trips, which to me kind of prioritises um, comfort. The second thing is reliability, and as far as I'm aware, there are no major concerns on this bike, right? Because you want to make sure that when you take the... When you take this again far away that you're not going to end up stranded in the middle of uh, of nowhere um, so that's another i suppose major aspect you want to not have to fill up every 100 miles which having looked at some reviews and the ducati multistrada um v4 that seems to be a common occurrence and i think with this 23 liter tank and pretty good miles per gallon if I'm not mistaken you're gonna be just fine the engine braking one of the things I've noticed is, is it's quite harsh um, it must obviously like certain rev ranges between the gears and downshifting from third to second I've certainly felt a bit of a oosh, um, which um, I guess on a slightly smaller engine you're going to be able to feel that going back to kind of the engine there seems to be a bit of a swift no, swift <laughs> too much record morty um, there seems to be a bit of a shift in sort of what adventure bikes are meant to be and what they represent so typically um, you have the larger sized engines which have reigned supreme for quite some time so the BMW 1200 um, you know the car TV4 you've got the 1290 super adventure KTM um, S which is actually a bike I've ridden so it that's usually what's been the standard but more and more now you seem to find that they're getting actually smaller engine more compact more not usable I don't know what the right word to describe them but there obviously seems to be an appeal for these kind of engines because otherwise they wouldn't be making them right and these sort of sized bikes um, so I think that's one of the things to take into consideration that I don't think it's fair personally to compare a 700 cc bike against a 1200 cc bike so this should only be compared against its peers um, which I mentioned them earlier so I think it's um, it's important to to be aware of that while I was in the shop I was actually looking at um, the sort of side bags um, which I, I don't know anything about because I've never I've never you know been on an adventure bike I've never had saddlebags or back you know back bags etc um, or top boxes whatever they're called but one of the things I noticed is I never thought they were quite big and I'm like well what can you actually fit in there but they are deceptively big you sort of open them up these side bags and you're like god there is a lot of space in there you're certainly going to be able to fit a lot of um, pants and socks um, which will be needed on long trips
I was also, as part of my due diligence and research, um, I was looking at the reviews of this bike and what people sort of have to say about it. And to be honest, you very rarely encounter a poor review. Um, so from what I can gather, people are very happy when they kind of purchase this bike. Um, and they must know what they're looking for, right? One of the things that I think we have to keep in mind is that everyone's got different needs um, and wants. And it's what a bike does for them is purely subjective. And it might, you know, it might not, be ex it might not excite me or you or, you know, another viewer as much. But we should recognise that it excites them and, and the bike does what it needs to do for those individuals. Um, it's quite it's quite, no, it's quite nice not having to worry about overtaking and going mad because this is not what this bike is about so i'm kind of going to enjoy my ride here while the yamaha tracer disappears in the distance but we'll meet back up don't you worry wonder how much different the bike would look if this tft dash was actually switched um what is it? Landscape rather than portrait. So let's try and delve into then what this bike is supposed to be able to do. So comfort perspective, I'm extremely comfortable. Um, slight vibration on my right hand, but I don't know if that's because I was riding a Ducati here or <clears throat> if it's because of this bike. So give it Give it another 20 minutes, then I'll be able to tell you. Um, so number one, I'm extremely comfortable. I feel like I'm on top of the bike uh, rather than in the bike, which I guess is fine because that's what these bikes are and the ergonomics of them, you know, they're big, they're bulky, they're tall. Um, so no, no qualms with that. Um, like I mentioned, the wind seems to be fine. I'm gonna, once I get to go above 65, I'll sort of touch back on that and um and let you guys know i'm pretty sure the tank is yet yeah, yeah, fuel gauge right there on the left i'm just obviously blind um so we've got a full tank of fuel um i want to say the range is middle 200 miles but i'm going to confirm that uh when i edit the video One of the things that sort of um, I was thinking about was like, is 72 brake horsepower enough? But from the brief acceleration I've experienced, it certainly is, and people are in agreement about that on the internet, um, which is always nice to hear. And again, when you buy, when you buy 700 cc, you're not going to expect it to. Um, you're not going to expect it to. They hopefully we've influenced a younger generation of motorcyclists right there. Um, that's always their hope. The more people know how to ride bikes, the more people are aware of us. Which means we don't get squashed. Um, what was I saying? Damn it, I forgot what I was saying now. The cute little baby distracted me. <laughs> Damn you. So we're going to shortly do the walk around guys, so I'll check back in with you and take a look at this Mad Max machine. This lean green, green? Lean, what is the saying there? Is it, no, lean, oh god, my brain's losing it today. We'll touch back in a second and we're viewing the bike. And here we are guys, parked up with the beast. Um, I do like it, you know, one of the things that are really growing at me and one of the things I really like as well is when people put lights in the sort of hand guards uh, here, I think it looks really nice, uh, obviously it gives you extra illumination. Um, I like what they've done with this sort of additional, I don't know if it's cover or kind of just shape and paint there, I like it, I think it gives the bike an edge to it. I like the yellow front around in there. Um, I like the four LED lights at the front. I think they're quite 
um, futuristic looking. Gold forks, radiator, you've got the grill underneath obviously protecting you when you go um, off-road. So that does the job, protects your engine and all your equipment. The World Rally va version, I think you can get it with the Akropovich exhaust. Um, I think this one just comes with the standard exhaust, which sounds nice, sounds grunty. Yeah, overall, I think it's a good looking bike. Um, and if you want to try it, there's the number to call. <laughs> QBS Molden. It's got chain protector there, which comes in handy again, I guess, when you're spitting out gravel and dirt on those on those roads. Um, I wish, guys, honestly, I could kind of you know, take in the back there and, and give you a, an example of what it's like <laughs> off-road, but it would end very badly, I think. Right, let's try and see if we can get a little bit of um, acceleration uh, and a bit more sort of understanding of what this would be like on a longer trip, because I think if that's someone who's looking at this bike, that's what they want to know. Right, let's jump back on. So, it's nippy when it wants to be, absolutely. I think you've got all the power you want there. Um, I did start to feel the wind a bit more when I was going 80, but it wasn't necessarily on smashing on against me. It was more so um, kind of coming crosswind. Um, so I don't know if that's the general direction of the wind, or uh, you feel it more because obviously you're sort of further up and standing up, which is always one of the differences uh, I feel anyway when we're riding in kind of bigger bikes. I wanted just to touch on the seat, um, it's squidgy, it's comfortable and I think my ass would be perfectly happy um, on this for a three, four, five hours, however long you know you adventure riders ride for. Um, I think you'd be, you'd be, I don't know if this is a standard one, I, I don't think it is, um, again another, another thing to double check. Because they, you know, I was slightly thrown off today, I thought we were riding the standard tenor version but they kindly gave me the third top model second top model sorry so guys this bike is meant to do this this is what I'm meant to do on this bike stand up and go through treacherous terrain but your boy ain't got that kind of skill. Maybe one day, maybe I'll, I'll try, because I think it's good to be able to, you know, learn how to ride on track, but also learn how to ride off-road, because you need different capabilities for both. One of the things I want to add um, is that it's actually quite a flickable bike given you know what it's supposed to be doing 
I think they said the lower size engine helps in that, but you can you can flick it around. I was just kind of just you know um, playing about with it a second ago, and it certainly needs to you know it certainly whips when you want it to. Right, I think we're sort of coming to the end of the video, guys. I hope it has been an enjoyable one. In summary, I think this bike has kind of given me a, a different sort of perspective on what motorcycles can be capable of and can do, and I'm not, not lying about that, because I, like I said, you know, I've only ever had one adventure bike experience. I can see the appeal of these. For me, I don't need an adventure bike in my life right now. Um, but, would I ever, you know, if I was to go on a long distance trip uh, that involved some off-road and just, you know, general bike antics, then this would be a top candidate, absolutely. Um, be interested to kind of, you know, try the Ducati Desert and the Honda, for example, to see how, you know, the unique characteristics and pros and cons of each. But overall, this has been a really nice bike to ride. It's got everything you could possibly want. The tech is up to spec, you know, you can um, thrash it, you can ride it comfortably, you can take it off-road, so yeah, it's a big plus for me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye all.